would like to offer up uh, this time in the beginning of the meeting for any public comment that anyone might have. Do we have any members of the public who would like to make any comments? Okay, seeing none, uh, we will move on um, to consider um, the adoption of the school board's 2011-2012 budget. Do I have a motion? Yes. I move to approve the 2011-2012 school budget in the amount of $21,124,690, which includes $452,524 in federal job bill funds. Do I have a second? Discussion? Ken, would you like to give us an overview first and then board members and take your from board members if they have comments? Okay. The uh, budget that the school committee is considering adopting tonight calls for a 2.2% increase in expenditures, uh, which translates into a 1.9% increase in property taxes for the median price home in Cape Elizabeth, that would mean a taxpayer would be paying approximately $85 more in property taxes due to the school budget. I want to make sure that it's just due to the school budget. So I'm not sure what the municipal side is at this point in time. But the major drivers in this budget, increases and decreases, salaries and benefits uh, are causing a $406,000 increase to the budget. Uh, that line is usually much higher conservative tentative agreement with our teachers association, so that line is a little bit lower than it would be in most years. In addition, we're reducing one and a half positions due to declining enrollments at Ponco, so that is another factor in why the salary line is lower this year uh, than it will probably be in future years. Uh, buildings and facilities, there's some increases there that uh, we have very little control over, things such as heating oil. Um, there's a slight increase in our property insurance, it's going up about $7,000, and there's a need to replace the boiler um, at the high school, and our payment on that will increase the building and facilities budget by $32,000. Um, that line would be much higher if we did not receive the uh, assistance from the town council. We remain appreciative of that. Um, so that allows us to keep the building and facilities um, line to about a hundred thousand dollar increase over what it was last year. Instructional support is up approximately fifty thousand dollars due to an out of district tuition. Um, we're actually have that student this year and cost the increase this year, but it was an anticipated increase. In athletics, there's an increase of $18,000. Most of that is due to uh, an increase in the expenses of the trainer. Um, we have been overexpending that line for the past two or three years. We've been trying to get by with a $12,000 or $13,000 yearly expenditure, and each year it's been costing us closer to $25,000. So the, the number in the budget is a more accurate portrayal of what we actually spend for athletic trainer. The other increases are transportation, uh, and that's due to fuel. It's about a $15,000 increase in the price of fuel that we are projecting. So those are the major increases. Um, <coughs> decreases in a contingency fund is back down to where it has been at historical levels, about 70000 We were able to beef that up last year because the state provided some unanticipated revenue near the end of the budget cycle. So that was that was up at like $300,000. But historically, we've only carried about $70,000 in that line item. And as you've heard me mention before, I think when times get better, that number really needs to be increased probably two or three times the size at least. Um, you know, a $21 million budget to have a $70,000 contingency is asking anyone to be way too precise at this point of the year. I mean, you've just had the discussion about, um, you know, the high school boiler, the um, middle school hot water heater, those things. And they'll be different 
great stories next year, but there will be probably <laughs> some other great stories. Uh, but in any event, the point is uh, it's a really skinny contingency gap. That service is down $34,000. The other accounts, and I want to express my appreciation for the members of the district leadership team and the development of this budget because I asked them to you know, bring in spending levels that were the same as previous years, and they did that. In fact, they reduced most of their lines. Uh, so if you put everything else that makes up the school budget, it's down about $8,000. Uh, so we think it's a budget that, you know, reflects the current economic climate, uh, and at the same time it maintains, um, you know, what is a pretty top-notch school system. Discussion from board members. Any comments? Um, David? Um, I was still writing. I was kind of hoping somebody else would speak first. Anybody else? Okay. <laughs> like having this bit, um, my first term, first year as a school board member, um, and not having the most. Um, talented math ability um, all my life, I found that this budget process was extremely um, easy to follow, navigate, and um, I want to thank everybody for making that process so easy to navigate and follow. So thank you, and congratulations to everybody because based on this process this year and last year, it seemed to have flowed a lot easier this year, so should I add? Going <laughs> 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 uh, I'm going off the top of my head anyway. So. Um, I, I think it's important for the, the town to understand how we arrived at this and how much more we did this year than previous years. Uh, and, and some of the key un fundamental factors underlying this. Um, and I was quite reluctant quite frankly, at the outset of this, to support what I think is an extremely low increase in the net to taxes, a 2.2% increase, 1.9% net to taxes, $85 per medium price home, to me, is far below what this town could afford to increase. And I am concerned about the future, given the vast uncertainties, which I'll talk about, but um, we did something that we haven't done in previous years. We were in a three-year projection, and projections is another word for guess, guesses, but I think we were fairly conservative in that. Um, to come at our figure, uh, what this assumes, and our three-year projection assumes, that we are funding this year by, by basically withdrawing from our, quote, savings accounts, money we've managed to squirrel away for the last couple of years in both uh, uh, federal jobs bill money as well as some excellent collection of Medicaid monies, reimbursement monies by our IS department that virtually, as far as I can tell, no other town comes close to doing as well as we do. And we managed to squirrel that away and we're going to be spending that next year and the year after to try and keep uh, the tax increase as small as possible. Um, but everybody has to understand that when you draw down savings and your projections turn out to be too optimistic, it's going to make for a larger increase in the third or fourth or fifth year if you're wrong. I happen to be comfortable, and it took me a while to get there, with the projections we've done and the assumptions we've made, but I think it's important for the town to understand some of the assumptions that we're basing it on, because if they prove to be wrong, uh, the situation will greatly change. I'm very comfortable that assumptions for next year are solid, which is why I will vote in favor of the budget for next year. Projecting two and three years out is very hard to do. Um, for example, one of the major assumptions uh, that we did, well, let me first say, one of the major reasons why I think our budget's coming in at such a low figure is, and we can't name the figures yet, but the teachers were extremely um, cognizant of keeping our budget as low as possible. They negotiated an extremely reasonable deal to keep them competitive with Yarmouth and Falmouth and Cumberland, but it was an excellent negotiation. So they made a lot of, uh, the figures they worked out, I can only, I guess I would call them extremely reasonable 
in light of the increase they've gotten in previous years to get them caught up with the IRS. So I think the major driving factor was a very good deal with the teachers if we finally sign it, but I, I think they deserve a lot of the credit here. And then second, we are drop, drawing down on our savings, I call them that, o over the next two years. Um, it assumes also that we will be reimbursing the state at the same level we are next year for the next three years. And that's a, an assumption that's open to debate because the last two years we've actually got a bump up in our monies from the state of Maine, which is almost unheard of in the last ten years for our school system. I personally do not believe that's going to continue. There's a lot of talk in Augusta about changing the EPS, for those who don't know what that is, that's basically the formula by which the state reimburses the town. They're going to change it. Uh, and that very, very well may happen. Right now, it works out to our benefit because it's based on property values, and our property values, regrettably, are not increasing as fast as percentage-wise as northern Maine or some other towns. They're talking about changing it to focus more on income. And I can assure you on an income basis, we will, our, our return from the state percentage-wise will go down dramatically. So we, we have to keep an eye on that. We're also plugging in numbers for Medicaid due to, again, some great collections uh, by our IS department, but they are really tightening up Medicaid and the reimbursement rates for that. And the figure we're using is the figure we are, we're going to get this year, but that may or may not hold. It's not a large enough figure that it makes me doubt next year at all, and was it a large enough figure that, that gives me significant concern for um, our, our overall what we're doing next year. But um, I want people to know that we were very prudent in doing this. We made a three-year projection to make sure we could do it. I'm very comfortable about next year. But people in this town should realize that a lot of things can happen in the next three years. And 1.9 is unbelievably low, given, given the factors, net to taxes, given the factors that are out there. If there's any significant changes in state revenue, any significant changes in Medicaid, any other significant changes in costs for the schools, it, we'll be looking for the only other revenue source we have, which is town taxes. But I'm voting in favor of this year because I think our three-year budget projections were, were very reasonable in light of what you can do in three years. Um, but they are subject to several guesses on key elements, some of which could vary dramatically. So I want people to realize that 1.9 this year is an extremely low number for the town. But we are maintaining an excellent school system. We were lucky to be able to do it this year because of our savings. Our savings will be dramatically drawn down in the next couple of years. And, uh, but I think it's fair for the town to know uh, we did balance both the school and the tax burden on the town. We came down the side of maintaining the school system and keeping the tax rate low by using our savings. In the future, that could be a very different story, and I think people should be aware of that. Thank you. I, I would just say that um, thank you, David, for explaining and Ken for explaining um, the big picture. What I've uh, realized, if I write my thank you list to everyone for the budget and the work that what I've learned over the years, it would be, um, it's really, I think this work has been like a one, in the one town concept. You've got, you know, community service. Uh, town council, all the administrators, the teachers, um, the parents and the volunteering that they've done, uh, the alternative energy, uh, the recycling committee, Eco Maine, we really have worked hard together to bring in a, um, hopefully a low enough budget that our um, townspeople can live with and still keep the schools um, functioning. Um, at a very high quality, and so I just want to appreciate it, appreciate all the work, and I'm proud of all the work that um, everyone has done, and the students for working so hard to make it easy to want to sit here night after night after night after night um, to do this work. So thank you, thank you. Thank
Um, so I will support this budget. I, I, I want to thank um, Ken and, and particularly the district leadership team and Pauline uh, for the hard work on the budget um, in terms of the, the district leadership team uh, for working very hard to uh, hold the line on, on virtually every spending line uh, in this budget outside of energy, salaries, and benefits. Um, that's that's a, a difficult thing to do, and, and, um, and I appreciate the, the time and effort that goes into getting that done. Um, I believe there's a lot for the town to be grateful for in terms of this budget, uh, which asks for a very modest uh, increase uh, uh, to, to the, the tax rate um, while maintaining the programs and services that, that make this district outstanding. Um, and uh, the, the, I guess the only other thing that I, I, I would add to what, what, what David has said is that um, while we do uh, face some uncertainties in the future, um, including um, some, you know, we know, we know of some revenue that we will uh, be losing in the future, um, we are taking uh, precautions with this budget in terms of uh, reserving some funds to help cushion the, those losses um, for for next year. Um, so I'm eagerly um, supporting this budget, which I think is a very careful strikes a very careful balance uh, between the needs of the taxpayers and the needs of the district. Thank you, John. Michael. Uh, sure. I'd, uh... I, too, am very supportive of the budget. I just want to highlight a couple items that um, in, in past budgets have uh, getting uh, a lot of discussion or comment. One is uh, our enrollment's declining. Why isn't that reflected in a de declining uh, school budget? So if you, our budget does reflect a, a modest decline in enrollment. Staff this year, we're reducing uh, by one and a half positions. Uh, so it does reflect the reality that we've had a modest decline in enrollment. It also reflects a nationwide issue of, of increasing health care cost. Um, so even if you have flat or a modest decline in staff, underlying health care costs in the budgets are about a 10 percent increase, and that's an issue every school district is, is facing. Another area, um, even though our enrollment has declined modestly, uh, like Dominic made a presentation, some of our instructional support uh, the intensity of the services we're required, not only required to uh, provide, but the desire to provide every child with an appropriate education is driving some uh, pressures in terms of, of, of further funding for that area. Oil costs, as we all know, have gone up substantially. As a user of, of fuel, we're, we're, we're not able to avoid that reality. And if you add on that a $925,000 reduction, in federal stimulus funds, I'm shocked that we're able to deliver a budget that is showing uh, a $448,000 budget increase given a lot of the pressures we're facing. So I think it's realistic, I think it's appropriate, and it reflects um, the realities in, in areas we really don't have a lot of control over, which are health care cost increase and, and oil cost increase. I'd like to thank the DLT for the fantastic job they've done, and I echo uh, Kim's comments said it was a very easy budget to follow, but as important as that, it was a very e it'll be an easy budget to communicate to to citizens and to the town council when they have uh, 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 questions on uh, the drivers of the budget. Thank you, Michael. Um, I'll just say that I'd like to thank Ken and Pauline and the district leadership team and all the staff members for the development of this budget. Um, okay, I think that leaves me, and I, too, will be supporting the superintendent's budget. Um, for most schools, uh, when we rolled out the budget, the story behind the budget was the devastating loss of the stimulus funds, and for us here in Cape, um, the story of this year's budget is um, thanks to the prudent planning of last year's board and to the creative work of our administrators and a conservative um, teacher contract tentative agreement, um, it appears that we're going to pull through the first year of the cliff um, without damage 
that so many of our neighboring districts seem to be facing. Um, with that being said, Cape Elizabeth is no stranger to lean budgets. Um, so I'm happy to say that we weren't facing a year of more cuts this year. Um, as such, we've lost um, value programs in the past. And unlike many of our counterparts, um, we have not had opportunities for improvement that many of them have had, for instance, one-on-one -on -one computing. Um, but this year we were presented with a maintenance budget, which I'm very comfortable with, and it means that the educational delivery will be mostly the same, um, with decreases made in staffing where thresholds were met, and increases for fuel expenditures and contracted salaries and benefits. Um, and this, to me, is a budget that upholds the school system um, for a minimal tax increase for homeowners. Uh, with that being said, I want people at least our, our taxpayers and our homeowners to know that um, even though this is a maintenance budget, I'm always in awe of how creative our staff is and how they always look to do more with less. Um, there were a couple examples I was thinking of this afternoon um, that we learned about through this process. And one was the retooling of the Achievement Center, the work that Jeff has done. Um, which is an excellent example of enhancing a district asset um, at virtually no extra cost to the taxpayer. Um, and we, he's provided a greater return for the district as a whole and for students and, and teachers as well. Um, Gary works tirelessly to provide free software and he's moved us over to Google Computing, which has saved the district quite a bit of money. Um, and then I was thinking of Greg and your custodial stewardship and how you have passed along some of um, some of the things we used to contract out to outside services, like refinishing of floors to our own employees, and that gives them uh, a greater sense of ownership and pride in, in the school system. So um, after hours of learning more about what our district does, um, during these budget meetings, I feel very confident that our administrators are committed to delivering a high quality product for a very reasonable cost. Um, our expenditure per pupil ranking is still among the lowest of our peer communities, so that continues to support that notion. So on my list of thank yous, I'd like to thank John Christie um, for being finance chair and running these meetings so smoothly for us. and. Um, our administrators and DLT especially for their work on the budget and countless ways that they support the district's um, work and the students that we actually never find out about or know. Um, I'd like to thank our teachers for um, the tentative agreement. Uh, I'd like to thank Mike McGovern and the town council for um, providing support around the boiler. Um, and I'd like to thank Ken for the time and the energy that you've spent constructing this budget and guiding us through this process. Um, so I'm proud to be able to support this budget and to pass it along to the town council in a couple of weeks and then on to the voters in May. So any additional comments? Okay. All those in favor? Seven zero. Okay, Ken has some um, some summaries to pass out to us. The real budget now. Two point two percent. That's right. Okay. Um, what I'm passing around is two pages, and it's what the state requires us to post. And I wanted you to have a copy of it so that when you saw it, you would recognize it. Um, there's two pages, right? One is entitled 2011-2012 People in the School Department General Operating Budget. And the other one uh, is a revenue summary. So what we will give to the town council um, is a budget book similar to the one that we've been working on. So it's going to be the same thing that you've seen for the past, um, I don't know how long we're doing this.
once a month or so. But I didn't want this to catch you by surprise. It's something that the state requires, but it's not how we're going to be presenting the budget to the town council. We're going to be presenting the budget to the town council the way we've been working on this for a month. Questions? Comments? Yes. Okay. Pauline, anything you want to add for clarity? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. I'll answer any questions that anyone has. Okay. David. I have to have a laugh. I know. It's just <laughs> way too long. <laughs> um, I, I gave my speech about what I thought was the overview of why we did what we did and I didn't think to thank anybody, but um, now that I, I feel a little bad because I, I do want to thank our district leadership team. It really was extremely enjoyable this year to do the budget process as opposed to my first year. And I also want to thank Ken for, in a large part, guiding us to a much simpler, straightforward budget that I think citizens can understand than what we've been used to in the past. And uh, I've already thanked the teachers for, for their help. but. It, it, it was a uh, extremely enjoyable experience this year. If one actually can call this joyous to look at budgets, but uh, I think it is, it's due to an excellent district leadership team, and quite frankly, to a gentleman who we're going to greatly miss, uh, Tim Murphy, for um, putting this into a format that everybody can understand. So, thank you. Thank you. That's all we have on the agenda tonight. So, do I have a motion? Oops, yeah. Oops. Can we also adopt the community services budget? Oh, that was not on our agenda. Well, when will that be done? We better do that. Thank you, Dan. Oversight of the interim superintendent. I wish we track what I said. <laughs> 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 Is there a motion? Um, do we have a motion for that? Mm -hmm. Because I think we'd be prepared to do that. Yeah, yes. we would. Yeah, we've been through the budget. We just yeah. What is the total amount? What's the amount for? You'll need a motion to approve that amount. Do you think we should make Janet come up? No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, one million, seven thousand. Okay. I have a motion. Okay. <laughs> uh, I move to approve the 2011-2012 community services budget in the amount of one million. $70,494. Discussion, please. But just for the benefit of the public that may be watching, um, the community service budget will uh, present no increase in taxes either. Uh, the same commitment on the part of the town that the town made last year uh, is being recommended this year, so two has a zero percent impact on that. I don't want the town to get the idea that we're just blithely passing something we've never seen before. We've actually been over that budget line by line on numerous previous occasions, and after a lot of questions about it, and we're very satisfied with the answers. And as Ken says, it's not an increase in taxes, but I think it's also worthwhile to say that it is a service that everybody loves and enjoys, and it actually, the total cost per uh, medium household, I think, is about 35 bucks in total. Uh, quite a bang for the, the uh, small bucks that we're doing, but we, we have investigated line by line um, in numerous sessions before. David, you forgot to use the word I. That doesn't sound like the narcissistic person I am. I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Well, I, 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 I,
I, I would just like to thank community services for creating a, a, an example of lifelong learning, which I think is a benefit to the, to the schools um, through, the, through the production of uh, adult education programs, um, and, and, uh, which, which benefit all the, all the members of the community, uh, particularly members of the community not otherwise involved with the school district. Um, and obviously, uh, many programs which benefit the, the younger uh, members of the community as well. But um, I think that example of, of lifelong learning that's set at community services is very important to what um, we try to do in the school district. So thank you, Janet, for that. Thank you, Janet. Thanks for bringing that to our attention, and thank you for all of the work that you do and um, for continually trying to meet the needs of the community. I'm always impressed at how you're all, you're never satisfied with the offerings, and you're always looking for, um, for ways to meet the needs of um, the community where we are, and you know, tweaking and, and um, looking at, at new ways to serve uh, needs, and um, and to offer education to all of our residents, from little ones to um, adults. And we appreciate all the work that that takes from you um, and your staff. You've got a great staff. So. Um, all those in favor? 7 zero. All right. So now, may I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> Unless anyone else has a budget. <laughs>